Afsan Rotansi. And I'm glad to say he joins me now. Afsan, uh, what about that uh, message? Uh, we, it just rolls off our back, these allegations of uh, being Russian uh, agents. Uh, although uh, I do hazard a guess that most countries in the world would, maybe even including the one I'm sitting in, would prefer Putin as their uh, leader than the leaders that they've got now and the alternative leaders uh, that they are faced with now. Uh, Putin is actually rather popular in the world now, isn't he? Yeah, I'm not sure whether they'd uh, want Putin to run their country, although that's a bit like Letter to Brezhnev, isn't it? The famous 80s film when working class people from Liverpool working in a factory saw no difference between the poverty and immiseration caused by neoliberalism in Britain and no difference between being there and Soviet Russia. But uh, yeah, it, um, it, it does occur to me, actually, given that you're talking about everyone being accused of being Russian, that if Tucker Carlson has been spotted in Moscow, that explains why uh, uh, they ban Fox News in Britain, according to Ofcom. Uh, but they don't seem to realize Tucker Carlson has left Fox News. But clearly, yeah, uh -huh. it's not gone the way uh, NATO countries wanted. And um, and that's why you don't really see that much Ukraine on uh, NATO nation media, as far as I can tell. Because I can tell you, there are reports while this program is going out on air, your brilliant Moats program, that uh, some of those towns that you used to mention about why, why were uh, British... Uh, uh, why was Britain immiserating itself to fund towns like Kupiansk and uh, other ones uh, when people in Britain don't even know where they are? Well, some of those towns in the past few minutes uh, won't be in the news in uh, Britain or in uh, the United States, but I understand that uh, Ardivka is about to be liberated by Russia, uh, so they say, and most importantly, the uh, Forbes magazine is saying something about 500 tanks that are going to stop a crucial uh, crucial strategic point at which NATO countries in the proxy war used to massacre those in what was eastern Ukraine. That's what's happening right now and uh, all ahead of this uh, uh, untold number of new billions going from the European Union to uh, attempt to try, and, uh, to try and kill more Russians in Western Europe. That's that's uh, what I'm seeing at the moment. Now, uh, Zelensky has fired uh, his head of state. It was uh, quite a tortuous <laughs> affair. First he was fired. Head of the army. Then he wasn't. <laughs> now he is. Uh, Zaluzhny. Um, kind of risky firing your chief of army staff in the middle of a war, isn't it? Yeah, I, thought, I got confused there. I thought you meant he's fired his head of state, meaning Joe Biden, I suppose, Anthony Blinken, who runs Ukraine <laughs> anyway, as far I as meant, we can... I meant uh, chief of army, sorry. Chief of army, yeah. Um, yeah, clearly uh, Zeluzhny, who uh, did an interview in... Uh, where was it he did the interview a month or so back, saying uh, it was a stalemate just when... Uh, 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 Zelensky was wandering around uh, as he does, telling everyone that they were victorious over Russians in various uh, battles. Clearly, Zelensky didn't want uh, someone like Zeluzhny telling not even the truth because they weren't. There was no stalemate. The Russians were winning, and um, he tried to fire him. And Zeluzhny said uh, no. And um, clearly, the Americans can do whatever they want uh, in that country, so uh, they are keeping Zeluzhny on, as far as we can tell. Yeah, Zelensky, immensely unpopular, it seems. A lot of infighting going on. But, uh, you know, we mustn't forget the tens of thousands of Ukrainians that have sacrificed their lives for nothing, uh, for uh, this U.S. attempt, self-avowed U.S. attempt, as uh, Lloyd Austin, if he's still alive, the Pentagon boss said, uh, to to hurt Russia, not to save Ukraine. This was never about saving Ukraine. This was about killing Russians and attempting to weaken Russia. And as we heard over so many years that uh, Joe Biden saying they're winning and uh, generals saying they're winning, and it was all lies. And how many, how many people have paid the price uh, for uh, what Joe Biden has done?
Some people uh, won't understand what you mean by Lloyd Austin if he's still alive. This is an intriguing story. Uh, it's a little vignette, perhaps not of great moment. But where is the US Secretary of Defense? Are we really expected to believe that he was in hospital and the president didn't know, wasn't informed? If so, that would take dysfunctionality uh, at the head of the US government into the realms of the absurd. But he has not been seen for quite some time. He popped up this week, finally, to answer some questions. But, you know, Edward Snowden, who, thanks to Julian Assange, won his asylum in Moscow, told us everything is surveilled, everyone knows where... The, the White House didn't know where Lloyd Austin, the head of the Pentagon, was, the largest uh, military, he's the titular head, of of any military in in the world. Lloyd Austin, the boss of the Pentagon, was a director of Raytheon. Uh, no doubt a blind trust has been put in his name so that uh, when he yeah. retires, he will get huge amounts of money from the mass uh, murder of Russians and Ukrainians that uh, he has caused in Western Europe. And of course, the uh, plausible genocide, as the International Court calls it when it comes to uh, uh, the uh, terrible events in Gaza. So um, uh, I can't remember a time when the head of the Pentagon has gone missing and yet no one appears to know where they are. Anthony Blinken doesn't know where he is, nor does uh, Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor. Uh, that shows, as you said, uh, complete dysfunction. All they can do right now, it seems, is bomb, aerially bombard in the middle of the night uh, ancient capitals and ancient civilizations that are all around me here in Dubai, uh, bombing Yemen, uh, bombing Iraq, bombing uh, Syria uh, just in the past uh, few days, perhaps bombing again now. That's what I wanted to ask you about next. Uh, what's the impact of that bombing? Uh, what's the military impact? What's the political impact? What's the impact on public opinion in your view? Clearly, um, in terms of military strategic impact, I mean, some say that uh, automatically when the United States used to bomb Syria, they'd always call Russia first to make sure that uh, U.S. aerial bombardment was just a show of uh, show of uh, bravado, uh, really, and make sure they weren't going to bomb Russians when they bombed in Syria, so to show how nonsensical they were. They terrify populations, of course, as aerial bombardment does. Uh, Yemen, obviously, it will have no effect except to raise insurance premiums and raise the cost of goods for everyone in Western Europe and the United States and cause inflation. Uh, there is no way, and Biden seemed to admit it uh, when he was caught uh, off camera, uh, being asked about what on earth the United States and Britain, <laughs> uh, Britain, which, of course, uh, was in Aden uh, so many years before murdering communists, um, so it, it obviously will have no effect uh, whatsoever on Yemen. On Syria, uh, it may help the uh, proxy de facto ISIS forces that uh, NATO nations have been supporting for so many years. The Iraqis said as much. Iraq has condemned on the other side of the border the bombing of Iraq over the weekend. Iraq doesn't want the occupying forces there. So again, this will uh, raise... And this is these are Iraqi government elements that are not necessarily as allied to the popular mobilization units in Iraq. So certainly the effect of the British and American airstrikes has been to unite the entire region once again against these NATO powers for mass murder and, of course, the, the main issue in this region and arguably in all regions of the global south, even whilst uh, NATO nation propaganda media tries to hide it, which is this genocide in Gaza. The Arab League backed South Africa's uh, claim and uh, suit at the International Court of Justice um, I think you said on your program, you had people say it was actually the International Court of Justice that was on trial. I can't remember it ever delivering anything good. And I know opinions vary on this, but how that international court could not have called for an immediate ceasefire as demanded by South Africa and the Arab League, which is after all, all these countries in the Arab world, 
how it could not have done that shows the shame of the international court uh, uh, forever. What about a ceasefire, Afsan? The uh, talks are going on not that far from you uh, in another uh, Gulf state. Uh, they say, they've been saying actually for 72 hours now that some kind of ceasefire uh, was uh, imminent. There's no sign of it. In fact, the killing right now this evening is reaching fever pitch uh, in Khan Yunus and also in Rafa. Uh, and of course, the human debris that is now exposed in Gaza City now that the Israeli forces have withdrawn. We keep talking about people being under the rubble. We hadn't quite factored in that some of those under the rubble would be evidence of Second World War level style war crimes. Uh, is there going to be a ceasefire? And if so, what will that achieve until the next round of uh, violence and counter violence? Well, Anthony Blinken is due here in the next few hours in this region. It's amazing, I think, to that so-called Arab street that people used to always talk about, uh, that he can uh, walk about freely, obviously under bodyguard, to the West Bank, where he's also due to go as well as to Egypt and Saudi Arabia and other countries and to Qatar and so on. Uh, these uh, rumors of ceasefire, where do they come from? It's the State Department stenographer press releases being repeated and regurgitated, giving false hope to so many people. Um, I suppose the grim reality is that when the killing exponentially increases, and yet it seems to every day and every night, we would expect a ceasefire, and just before something had been negotiated, they will murder even more babies, even more children, even more pregnant women, even more uh, men, civilian men. Maybe, maybe that's a much better indicator of whether there's going to be a ceasefire, because certainly resistance groups on uh, X are uh, certainly not saying that there is any imminent uh, ceasefire of any kind. And so, um, I mean, this comes at a specific time. You said that Saudi Arabia will be joining BRICS. The Palestinians uh, have found themselves in a very difficult uh, uh, position because, you know, Russia came to the aid, belatedly, some would say, to those in eastern Ukraine suffering at the hands of NATO's proxy forces. But who will come to the aid of the Palestinians militarily? I know Yemen uh, has, but... Uh, uh, Russia and China can't, no matter what Russia and China try to do at the UN Security Council, and the UAE, indeed, calling for a ceasefire, tries to do. So um, it'll be a case uh, I think many people grimly see, and in the Arab world, it must be seen as this they're helpless. I mean, and uh, Joe Biden and uh, Western Europe are, apart with a few honorable exceptions in Western Europe, uh, showed their the depths of their depravity by uh, cancelling money for the United Nations Relief and Workers Work Agency, the only agency that is is giving aid through the rough crossing uh, in in a concerted uh, scale. I know the UAE and Saudi Arabia are uh, doing so separately. So, so the situation has never been more grim, and I think the International Court of Justice needs to be put on trial uh, for allowing this to happen. Well, Israel was given one month uh, to comply and to report back uh, to the court. What I'm hearing is they're not even going to turn up. They've just treated it with complete contempt of court. And uh, maybe they were right to do so in the sense that a court which cannot and will not even try uh, to uh, impose its verdicts uh, probably isn't worthy of that much respect. Plausible genocide. What? You just take it back to Nazi Germany. What? They would have said uh, Auschwitz was plausible genocide. Uh, let the Nazis come back to us in a month's time. I mean, this is absolutely beyond uh, be beyond belief of any kind. And we know how weak they are because famously uh, United States officials said if ever 
there were war crimes charges at the ICJ. Or was that the ICC? I get them both confused because so obviously biased are well, they against the global south. Uh, the Americans said they would invade Holland and, what, murder all the judges. I mean, I, mean, I presume that's what the United States meant when they said if there was ever a verdict against the USA, which is not a signatory in any case. It is, in fact, an act of Congress called the Invasion of the Hague Act, signed by the president. It is American law that if any American citizen is arraigned at the ICJ or the ICC, either, both of them in the Hague, that the United States has the legal power to send in the Marines. I promise neither of us is making any of that up. Arsene Rattansi, as Holland, always, And Holland, of course, to see you. is participating Good. in this coalition to prevent the embargo in solidarity with Palestine. How can the IC, why isn't the ICJ bringing yes. in the Dutch government? The, yeah, the, the mighty Netherlands Navy is this minute in the Red Sea, in the Arabian hey, Sea. Hey, our Queen Elizabeth aircraft impose. carrier is not doing so well either. Our aircraft carrier, the Queen well, Elizabeth, is not doing so well. Uh, uh, that's something I had omitted to mention. I don't know if it was a uh, deeply concealed national armor proper, uh, but as you raise it, let's tell the viewers, Britain's flagship aircraft carrier headed for the NATO war games broke down in port and will not now be going. It's Gilbert and Sullivan, isn't it, Afsan? Off the, uh, I can't remember which uh, operator that is. That's off the back of the famous picture of two warships colliding with each other recently. Again, all these warships kind of co-conspirators of the genocide. And I know one thing, if you win the Rochdale by-election, Sunday Press, uh, even here in Dubai reading it, I can see them all saying uh, George Galloway will never win. Uh, if you win, I'm pretty sure you'll be asking why $3.8 billion is, uh, or is it pounds, spent on an aircraft carrier that doesn't work. Wouldn't the three point eight billion have been better spent? Some of it on those people in Rochdale uh, who desperately uh, have been immiserated over decades of lack of public investment in their health care and social care and and uh, housing uh, for for so long. You bet, Afsan. Thanks for joining us on the mother of all talk shows. Much obliged to you.